Welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers. Today's TV show that I will be reviewing is Altered Carbon Episode 4 named Force of Evil. But before I get into my review, if you are enjoying the content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell for notification. If you are not caught up with all the episodes of Altered Carbon, or haven't seen episode four, consider this your spoiler warning. And now to the review. I like this episode. Finally, it looks like we're taking a, a pivot from the first three. I'm assuming that as I'm watching it, I'm a little bit obviously years behind and late to this party, but I enjoyed this episode more than the first three. Uh, this episode was centered around the Dia de los Muertos or the Day of the Dead, which rose a couple of questions, even though they did technically answer it. They took the Dia de los Muertos as a ancient tradition, which I get. We do that the same thing with holidays that we celebrate now. But I enjoyed the fact that they were hypothetically, I guess, paying tribute to the ancient culture that Hispanics or Mexican Americans celebrate and the fact that Detective Ortega and her mom was are Hispanic in this miniseries, I, I could respect that. But I thought this episode was well filmed, was well acted. It flowed very, very good. It was two stories in one. Obviously, we had the Detective Ortega's Dia de los Muertos. And we also had Kovacs, a story running parallel. We got a little bit more flashbacks from, Kov from Kovacs past when we see him in what I'm assuming is his original body. And we got a little bit more of the backstory as to what is going on. What is the purpose of this rebellion and how they get the training and if there was a nitpick is that the scenes with Kovac and the flashback scenes that basically is the whole the whole episode in Kovac's scenario. But it was even though that was the main focus of this episode, or at least a half of the main focus of this episode, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was the backstory that I myself needed to finally feel familiar with what's going on. And in my privilege, previous review of this, of this series on episode three, I felt so lost, completely lost. And I was getting frustrated with the, with the show because I didn't feel I was moving anywhere. I, I was just seeing things happen and it wasn't elevating my experience to the show. But sure enough, as soon as I put that review out, I watched the next episode and I was thoroughly entertained and I enjoyed it. The part where Ortega, you know, in the celebration of Day of the Dead, as we know it normally in our time, we put offerings up. We put offerings and pictures and the movie uh, Coco kind of dives into it, which will make it more uh, relatable to everyone in case you're not familiar with, with what is the Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos. Uh, take a look at that movie. It kind of goes over it in detail. But we currently put offerings and food and the stuff they liked when they were alive. And it's a way to remember them. And there's a huge celebration, especially in, in, in Mexico and in, in uh, Latin America. But in this future, since you can put people in other bodies or as they call them, sleeves, uh, Ortega to do to, to kind of have a a gift for her mother she puts her abuela or her grandmother in this convicts he's all tatted up and you know he, he, he's like basically a convicted felon but she puts her grandmother in this sleeve 
as a way of poking fun at the um, like her mom has like religious she's super religious the fact that god exists or what we consider religion in our time still being present after what i could only assume is the de-evolution of everything as, as the advancement of technology takes uh, front and center I mean, normal, normal, no, well, I want to call them mortal, but they're obviously not mortal, but normal people have taken the place of gods or the billionaire, the elites have basically taken the place of God. So it wasn't too far fetched as maybe a certain sect, but the way she was like a certain sect survived this uh, religion and they kind of still brought it on to this futuristic aspect. But that, that, you know, uh, it's the least far fetched out of the whole thing. But Ortega puts her grandmother in this, you know, sleeve that definitely isn't the best choice. And her mom kind of is against this whole thing. She believes in death. She believes that we live and death is part of the process of life. And in a way, she was trying to, you know, bring back her her dead grandmother of, of her of her mom's mom to pay to give her like a little bit of a tribute and one day for them to spend together. And obviously, it rubs her mom the wrong way that uh, Detective Ortega is playing God and bringing her and putting her grandmother in this in this uh, inappropriate sleeve or body. Even though the actor that that is portraying her grandmother did a great job. I love the fact that it wasn't broken Spanish, that they found someone that, I mean, he didn't look Hispanic at all or Latin American, but I, I, I heard a little bit of an accent, but I liked the fact that he was very, almost fluent in it. And the conversation between him and the family, him and Ortega or her, however you want to look at it, was very, very well done. I enjoyed that little gimmicky kind of a thing with that aspect as far as bringing a new little thing as what Dia de los Muertos, if we could take it into the future, how it would, how it kind of would look, at, at least in the imagination of of this show so i i enjoyed that and at the towards the end you know ortega's great uh, ortega's grandmother doesn't want to be brought back she also believes that death is what makes living beautiful that nothing is definite that there is an end so you get to enjoy life as you as you're alive where you should enjoy life when you're actually breathing and when your time is up hey that's just life and she tells her hey don't bring me back and detective ortega's kind of taken aback but I, I it seems that she agrees but we are not familiar but i enjoyed that half of the story but back to kovacs um this whole thing right so at the end of episode three, again, we are, he gets drugged when he goes to the brothel. So we, we basically follow up with him and they put him under like in this computer program to try to break him, right? Because there's someone that wants uh, information from him. And it kind of just like, a, you know, Groundhog Day. He, he could die, but they could revive him and torture, torture, any, any kind of form of torture you could think of you could do in this program but you he doesn't die at least not yet there is a way to kill him within the program where his you know his brain will burst or his heart will burst and stuff but we get flashbacks when he's being interrogated to what he was being taught when he was again i'm assuming it's his his original body and you know the i can't remember her name the one that plays his his love interest but in this episode we find out that uh a kovacs the og kovacs was going in there to kill the rebellion but then somehow he falls in love with her the i can't i i wish i knew her name i can't remember her name but the actress is the uh, goldsberry so he you know the og kovacs is falls in love with her and but she's trying to teach him kovac and the whole group 
what to do when you're trapped in these interrogations, when you're in this system and how to work around it. So we're going back and forth, back and forth. And it is kind of drawn out a little bit, but then when he figures it out and he goes on that killing spree, gold. Loved it. Mwah. That was beautiful. I enjoyed that whole gory mess. Absolutely. A hundred and whatever percent. Uh, that was definitely the highlight of this episode when he just gives no fucks about it and just goes John Wick on everyone. He it's like someone killed his dog and this guy's just going, you know, berserker mode. And I enjoyed it. And then we find out, obviously the cops find out in this era and it's just a bloody gore scene. They can't believe it that this one, you know, guy did, did all this and, and just goes basically, you know, like I said, it just goes, just goes buck wild on everyone that caused him pain in that scene. Towards the end though, we find, I, well, at least what I got as a little bit of a twist, it seems Ortega, Detective Ortega and this Kovac, the, the I'm, ass, I'm assuming it's the, it, well, it's not the second sleeve Kovac's been in. I think this is the third sleeve he's in it. But it seems that this sleeve, the carcass that Kovac is using or the body that Kovac is using, it's somehow attached or there's a relationship with Ortega because he was like, Hey, this guy knew me and he was calling me by another name, which he was throughout the whole torture scene. And he kept on saying, Hey, I'm not him. I'm not him. But uh, apparently he puts two and two together and Ortega shows up in his hotel room, obviously because of all the murder that he did in the prior scene, but he starts like cutting himself. So you, uh, you end up kind of realizing that there's maybe some hidden connection that I am not yet aware of, but that we're going to find out maybe in episode five or episode six. So, but it, again, enjoyed it. It didn't lag. There wasn't all this crazy sex and all that kind of extra stuff that I could definitely enjoy, but in moderation. And this episode was brilliant. I wish that they would have had this type of mindset when they were doing the first three episodes, but Hey, it looks like we're taking, we're, we're pivoting and we're, we're, we're rounding off the corner. So, uh, let me know what you guys thought of episode four. Did you guys enjoy it as much as I did? I thought this was the, 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 the most well-written, well-acted, the, the best overall story of this uh, series. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And like always, that's a wrap.